So we are going to uh, study triple integrals, integrals over uh, three dimensional domain. <clears throat> so even high dimension to be go on, go beyond the three dimension. We can, uh, but but uh, in most of cases we will deal with a single integral, double integral, and uh, and the triple integral. The uh, integral involves three variables. All right, so the definition uh, is similar, just as the integral will be the Riemann sums of uh, the limit of the Riemann sums of the function. So we here's a here's a here's a rough idea. We divide uh, uh, yeah, so you let uh, f now have a three variables be a function on a domain d in uh, a region d r in r r three. So this i is a is a is a it's not necessarily it's a it's a rectangular box. Okay. Okay. So what I'm going to do is um, you div uh, this is a in the x y z plane. So i is going to be uh, a from b and c to d and time i and s, for example, right? So uh, you have a three, uh, this is a product, oops. This is weird, okay, right. <laughs> the color changes. Yeah, and the i and s, so that's a standard notation. Okay, it's a rectangular box. So how do you define how do you define the integral, triple integral of this function of this domain? So the idea is very simple. In uh, in the one dimension case, you just partition the the interval into many subintervals. Here you you divide the, this region, cut this region in many uh, smaller rectangles. Okay, so so you get it at each okay. At each point in the space, and you actually, yeah, the the the, the triple integral of the function uh, is going to be the limit of the Riemann sums. Riemann sums involves three index i, j, k from one to n, and f of x i star, y i y j star, z k star, and here will be delta x i, delta y, j, delta z, k, something like that, okay? It's a very similar, what is there? This, um, this is a, this is a, as a ice, there's a very small cube inside there, uh, and this will be delta x, i, delta y, j, delta z, k. So you take a, a, a tiny cube inside and pick up an arbitrary point inside this cube, this is the idea. So it's called the Riemann sums. And then uh, add them together, right? Add them together and you get a sum. And then the limit means the, this, this small rectangle is getting smaller and smaller. If, if the Riemann sum approaches some number, fixed number, then that number is called the integral of the function over that region, okay? So here, all the size, the xi goes to zero, delta yj goes to zero, delta zk should be goes to zero. So the, those are the, the size of the, of the smaller rectangles uh, is getting smaller and smaller. So they're supposed to get approach as a limit. If the Riemann sums approach a limit, and that limit is called uh, uh, the integral, is denoted by this notation. If the limit is finite, then Uh, then we say the function is integrable, okay? So, yeah, a function is integrable if uh, f is integrable if uh, the limit exists, okay? And uh, the limit is denoted by this notation, so this is the idea. 
Now, what the Riemann did is, uh, it's why it's called Riemann sums. Riemann says that if the function is closed, uh, is a continuous, and uh, yeah, here's uh, what the Riemann did. Riemann, he did it for thing. So if, uh, if f is continuous on, on the, on the up, okay, then, then this integral uh, convergent or exists, okay? And actually the more general, okay, you, you can, uh, <coughs> what should you say, if, uh, if you have a nice uh, domain inside a rectangle, okay, even a little more general, if, okay, R, D is a, is a, is a, is a closed domain or region in R was, was a, I just should say was a nice boundary. So the boundary can be consists of small surfaces, okay? Yeah, consisting of small surfaces, such like a boundary, you know, like a, like a football type, you know, to me, okay? So, so something like, yeah, it's, it's harder to draw a sweet, yeah, like this one, but the containing the box, Right. So this is a D. Uh, I I should use a still use a same R, but maybe I choose because I'm going to use D for two dimension. Okay. So I'm going to put it. Um, what I should say, use a, some kind of notation. This R. Oh, E, I got it. <laughs> okay, let's use the E, okay? Capital E, okay? Capital E is inside this R. R means it's a rectangle box, okay? All right, so, so if it's a nice, okay? Almost smooth, maybe there's some, some area, some curve around some curve, it's two, two surfaces glued together, okay? Then, uh, yeah, okay. Then uh, if F is continuous um, on E, I'm going to extend it. And I want to define the double int the triple integral over this uh, uh, solid, which is not a rectangular box, okay? <coughs> then, uh, uh, yeah, then define, what should I say, not, that's not the condition, I just concede, okay? Let, B continuous, okay? Then define uh, a capital F, uh, which is going to be the lit F of a Z for, for X, Y, Z in the E and zero uh, for uh, if this is this point is outside E, okay? So, so, so now this double integral as uh, this triple integral of E okay, is defined to be, yeah, it's going to be actually, is going to be this triple integral. Okay, that's the definition. Is this triple integral capital F V and this one is always exists. Okay, as long as the F so capital F is not continuous, but it's not too bad, okay? Um, because the boundary of this domain E is nice, right? So it's almost continuous, but dispersed around the boundary of the E. That's okay, so this one still exists, and not only, yeah, this will be exists. So, so we, can, uh, we can define the triple integral uh, of F over E, which is not a rectangular box, and okay, using this, I think just like the double integral. Okay, so this is a uh, yeah, just because of this integral of a capital F of R exists, uh, F is not a continuous function, but it's not too 
it's not too bad, okay? This is a continuous inside E, but zero outside the E. Okay, and the E itself, the boundary is nice. Okay, so uh, yeah, we <coughs> so we yeah we we try. You can define the uh, in double triple integral of the function of a, a very uh, irregular domain. Okay, it's not necessary to be rectangular box. All right. So now. Uh, so we have this, right? So we now we can define any uh, and more uh, uh, more uh, uh, the forbidden theorem still holds, okay? So the forbidden theorem holds um, even for for this double integral of capital F of R. Okay, so this is a forbidden theorem, okay? The forbidden theorem says that uh, if capital F is continuous function on R, or it is continuous in a domain with nice boundary, but this bound, yeah, the domain is containing R, okay? Then, uh, then uh, the forbidden theorem holds, okay? So more precisely, just for, for, for this capital F, okay? For, for the for the above uh, f on um, uh, e, okay, we have the following for business theorem. Uh, this is going to be capital F dv. Okay, we just using little f. We can define it v, right? Uh, you can uh, you can get two type of uh, Forbidden theorem. One is you take a mm, yeah the integral. Uh, it depends on which side you're going to use. Okay, so actually there's three versions. Uh, you can use in the x here. Okay, if you use a dx then this will be double integral, okay? Dx, x is from A to B, and this I'm going to call it, uh, uh, capital uh, D, okay? So this will be the F D A, okay? okay. So what is the, uh, uh, if we want to, uh, yeah, this D actually is independent of of a little x, okay. So, so this d is just from c d cos r s, okay. But you can also take um, there are lots of freedom here. You can take off c and d, and then you have yeah, that's called that's still another d the same. Use the same notations d a and d y, okay. So you can use the y variable to to define, then this will be a and the b plus i and the s. Okay, <clears throat> and similarly, you can use uh, <clears> that. <throat> you can i and s. And that is going to be capital F D A and D D Z. Okay. So this D is going to be A and the B plus C and the D. Okay. This is a one type of uh, iterative integrals. You can also, yeah, there are lots of, uh, uh, you can also consider, now the double integral state can be, uh, it can be evaluated using iterative integral, okay? So, so you can also do the following, A, B, C, D, Right, and is uh, capital F X Y Z D Z D Y D X, for example. Okay. Okay. So this is a very uh, more general, uh, the most general iterative integral. Okay. 
we here assume that capital F is defined on the whole rectangular box. Okay. Yeah. Then you can also uh, you can also uh, it uh, it in the yeah you can evaluate integral is the following integrated integral capital D okay and this is a I and the S and the DA okay now what is D here uh, double integral is all side and the B and the C and D okay. So there are many ways to, to evaluate the triple integral, right? As long as, uh, as, long as F come, capital F comes from, comes from, uh, uh, yeah, capital F is the extension of a little f on some, some uh, solid, region in the three dimension space. The solid region is nice. It is contained in a rectangular box. And then then uh, for the for this triple integral of capital F over this uh, rectangular box, you can have so much freedom to evaluate this integral. Right? So let's go over the first one. Yeah. Yeah, this is just um, as the idea is like that. Okay, so here's the rectangular box for the first one, okay? So the idea is <laughs> you take an arbitrary point, uh, yeah, I should draw the, I should draw it in this way. X axis, Y axis, Z axis. So take arbitrary point X and you draw, uh, uh, Take an arbitrary point X for the fixed X, you are going to get uh, you are going to get this uh, this domain. Okay. Okay, so this is going to be inside it's a it's a D. Okay. So basically you're going to evaluate this double integral over each cross section inside. Okay, first, then you get the function of x, then you evaluate that result along the x-axis. Okay, that's a picture. Now, for this one here, it's different. Okay, I don't distinguish a different d here. For this one, let's understand the integral, right? So here, still, Uh, yeah, let's draw the, yeah, let's draw the region. Yeah, that's a special, let's put, put in that position, it's easy to, to, to visualize. Okay, what we're doing here is, my D is, is this part, it's a fix at the bottom. Okay, the D. So for every point X, Y in the right, I draw a vertical lines going through the going through the region. So what I'm doing here, I evaluate the integral of F around this lines vertical line segment first. Then I get a function on so domain D, then I evaluate this double integral. So it depends how do you, uh, div how do you divide uh, uh, this uh, three dimensional rectangular box, okay? You can choose one, a one two dimension domain and then draw a lot of vertical lines and going through that 3D domain, okay? Or you can choose a point along one axis, right? And then draw lots of uh, two dimensional uh, uh, planes. So those two dimension uh, uh, regions fill up the whole 3D solid, okay? Just cut the solid by slide, slide. And here I did not cut the solid, but I actually put the one slide and put a lot of 
uh, sticks. <laughs> so they are filled up the whole uh, domain. So there are two ways to describe the 3D domain. Okay. Now you later on you will see how do we evaluate the double uh, triple integral of a domain. We have to convert it to anyway. We have to convert it to uh, a double integral and single integral, and the double integral will be converted to uh, a, 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 you know two single integrals. Okay. Then we can evaluate. <coughs> okay. So let's do the following problem. And uh, let me make up the problem first, right? So here my domain uh, is going to be, it's described, uh, I is bounded by this three surface, x squared plus y squared. This is a cylinder, okay? It's less than one and Z is between zero and B zero is one. Okay, so this is a this is a, a, a cylinder in the three-dimensional space. Okay. So this is a R. Okay. So I want to evaluate this triple integral. Okay, uh, you can call it E. This is not the rectangular box. Already, so that's called E. Doesn't matter what your notation. Okay, I'm going to evaluate the integral of Z and the dV. Okay, so Z is going to be the value of the point at point x, y, z. Okay. So how can I evaluate this triple integral? I just apply the. You know, I'm going to express it as double integral and single integral, okay, together. The best way to do is use a second formula, okay? I'm going to use this one as a D, okay? okay this is a D. So, so, um, so this is a green, I'm not gonna draw a rectangle box here. What I'm gonna do is this is gonna be the domain as a double integral, okay, and then, Take arbitrary point in this double int uh, in this domain as the D is going to be x y x squared plus y squared is less than one. Okay. Then for each pair of numbers, I draw the vertical lines. And clearly uh, uh, z is going from zero to one when this line segment going through the solid, right? So then dz. Okay, got it? Yeah. So now it's easy to, to evaluate integral. It's going to be half of z squared evaluated to end the point, and you get a number, which is just one half. Okay, and then that is going to be uh, just one half in the area of d, and our area of d is going to be pi times one squared. So just pi over two, so they were saying. Okay. All right, so yeah, you don't need to go through the rectangular box and you're just trying to see how do you understand the solid, okay? If we have a, a, a if we have a, like a, this kind of 3D in a space, there are two different ways to describe it. One is you, you project it to to uh, to a domain, okay? And uh, this can be x y uh, plane. This can be z z y plane. This can be x z plane. Okay. So so then you draw the vertical lines perpendicular. You draw the lines perpendicular to this plane, and then you figure out uh, the you figure out uh, the variable along this line. So a typical, <clears throat> a typical example is this is an x, y, z, okay? Uh, D is a domain, the x, y plane. In that case, and this triple integral, uh, this is an E, right? The triple integral of f dv is gonna be the double integral on D. D is a projection of this three D, okay? So three, uh, three dimensional uh, solid. Then you have to figure out uh, 
you, ha you have to figure out uh, the uh, the upper bound for the for the z variable and lower bound for z when uh, when you choose a point x y in the d right. So it's not necessary to be a fixed uh, uh, interval. Okay. So this is the idea. You have to choose uh, the height. Yeah. So you know it's not very clear, right? So if uh, if uh, if you can describe the z coordinates of those two points, then you can get upper bound, and lower bound for the z. Okay. So then you you get uh, a single integral at double integral. Then you can evaluate. Okay. Another way, yeah, let me describe the ideas. This is idea one. And this, another idea is, yeah, let's, uh, let's call it, uh, yeah, the height, let's call it this z is going to be, um, yeah, let's call it the beta x y, okay? Depends on this z uh, is going to be alpha x y. Then you have to put the alpha x y here. And beta x y here. Okay, <coughs> you have to <coughs> you have to look at this three D uh, uh, region in order to determine the lower bound for the z, the upper bound for the uh, for the for, for the z. Okay, another way to 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 describe in each case you have three different uh, 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 domains there, but I just use the x y plane. Okay. Uh, for the simplicity, I'm not going to discuss in other three cases. So this is another solid, right? So how do you how do you uh, 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 use a double integral, single integral to describe it? Right? And it depends on which variable you're going to use. Right? You're going to use uh, x or z variables the last. And then you along the z axis, right? Along the z axis, you cut the solid, right? A piece is like that, right? And uh, so this is a z, right? For each z, you get, you cut it. So the triple integral is going to be, right? And then you have a, I and the S, this lower bound and the upper bound, it's already fixed. Then inside, you have the double integral. But this double integral, this is a D. Sometimes it's not constant, especially when the cylinder and its D is a fixed, okay? But, uh, but if it's not a cylinder, uh, this can be changed, okay? That's okay. So this depends on Z. I just put a Z here, depends on Z. In general, it depends on Z, unless you are just like the above example, unless it's a cylinder, okay? Because the D is the same D, okay? D is going to be uh, uh, the actually the, the projection of this cross section onto the X. Yeah, this is a DZ. So this is a DZ in the XY plane, two dimensions, okay? <coughs> And this is a, just ideas. Okay? So if if it's a if it's a ball, okay, then if we still want to use this method, then every time when you cut the ball by horizontal plane, then the domain is getting smaller and smaller. Okay. So let's let's look at this. Let's look at this, and to see how different how different uh, uh, integrals we are getting set up. Okay. Let's set up two integrals. Yeah, this is very important. Uh, and the E is going to be x, y, z, x squared plus y squared plus z squared is less than one. Okay. All right. <coughs> and you have a function defined on this ball. And how do you change, evaluate this integral, right? So I'm going to set up two different integrals uh, for this. Okay. So, um, so this is a ball, okay? Uh, okay. Right, this is a ball with radius one. 
There is a difference in terminology between boy and sphere. Boy is a, is a, is a solid, enclosed by the sphere. Sphere just mean, usually in mathematics means the surface. Okay. Yeah. So let's do the first one. How do you uh, iterate the integral, right? So you can uh, project the sphere onto xy plane. So the d is this is the d. Okay, so here D, the first method, okay, D is going to be X and Y, X squared plus Y squared is less than one, right? Right, but for each D, for each point in X, Y, uh, in the D, you draw, uh, 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 you draw a vertical line, okay? And then you determine the value for the Z for each one, for each, x y in the d the z has lower bound and upper bound right the upper bound clearly is one minus x square minus y square the lower bound that will be negative that, that is the upper bound lower bound then you can uh, change the, the the this triple integral f into a double integral dA, and then this is a single integral. It's from negative one minus x square minus y square, and one minus square minus y square, and here's f and the dz. Got it? Yeah. So when you integrate, you know, when you evaluate integral inside, you will get a function of x y, and then you evaluate integral of the function in x and y over that disk. Yeah, d is a disk, right? <clears throat> you can continue. Right. The second idea is slightly different. The second idea is slightly different, okay? So what I'm gonna do is, I want to, for each Z, okay? I want to uh, change the, uh, this triple integral into a single integral. Z is lower bound for Z is one. And I choose the Z first, okay, upper bound. Then you get a double integral, okay, that depends on Z, okay. For each Z, yeah, for, yeah, you choose an interval for Z. Okay, first. Okay, so z is between negative and the positive one. Okay, then for each z, okay, and x squared plus y squared is going to be less than or equal to one minus z squared, right? Okay, so this will be the radius, determine the radius of of the disk, okay, so that actually what you got here is a, is a dz x squared plus y squared less than one minus z squared, okay? So that is a dz. <coughs> the radius of a, of a dz is going to be square root of one minus z squared, okay? So then here's dA. Uh, So you're going to evaluate, yeah, this is still, you know, it's projection to to two-dimensional plane. So this is a DZ. Um, so it's a, it's in, this DZ is in R2, okay, in the plane. So now here you have to evaluate this double integral first, then you get a function of a Z, and you evaluate this function of a Z over the interval from one to z. So there's two different ways to, to begin with, right? And but in either way, you have to meet this double integral. Or you want to evaluate the double integral first or second. It's, uh, it's up to, yeah, it's up to you. Now, in this case, uh, yeah, let's do this, okay? So for example, uh, find the, the volume of, of the ball 
was using using the area of the disks. Okay, of the ball was the radius. Ah, right. That's called um, yeah. Using two dimensional uh, uh, formulas to find the volume of the ball. So the volume of the ball, it depends on how do you set up integralize this integral as f is just equal to one. Okay, so the so volume of the ball is going to be the triple integral of e. This ball is e. Okay, it's just this f is one. Clear, right? So now I'm going to use the two different ways to to find the evaluate this triple integral. The second method, <coughs> yeah, the first one. What it says, the first one. The first one says that it will be the double integral. Okay, d. Okay, d actually is going to be x squared plus y squared less than equal to r squared. Okay, and for each for each point x y, then you draw the vertical line. So it's integral from negative square of r squared minus x squared minus y squared. Okay, then dz and dA. All right, so you got twice of this. And twice of this. Now, the trouble is you have to still have to evaluate this integral. And how to do that? We use a, we use a, a, a polar coordinate again. So use a polar coordinate. So x equals r. Um, <coughs> yeah, this capital, let's use a row, okay? Row cosine theta, y equals rho sine theta, right? Because we already use a little r here, right? So then the double integral becomes um, the integral um, Yeah, you can have uh, you can low first alpha doesn't matter okay low is from zero to r and theta is from zero to two pi okay so theta should be inside two uh and r square plus y square is going to row square and here's row d theta zero okay yeah there's another term here and uh, since it's independent of theta, so I can take a two pi out, it's a four pi. Okay. Then you have to use a substitution. Okay, but this can be evaluated. So let u to be r square minus low square. du equals negative two rho d rho. Okay. So it's going to be, I need a, I need, a, I need a two over there, okay? So when low equals one is get R square, when low equals R square it's zero, and this U to the one half, two rho equals negative DU, okay? Uh, so the anti-derivative is going to be, it's negative, let's put a negative sign here, it's going to be, 2 over 3 u to the 3 over 2 is right. So you only get 2 pi, 2 over 3, and the low square and the 3 over 2. So your answer here is a 4 pi divided by 3 r cubed. Great. This is a formula for the for the volume of the ball, which we do sign. Now if you do the opposite way, probably much easier, okay? Uh, so you really have to be careful when you, when you start with the problem. So this is the ball again. Yes. So I'm trying to let you to compare both methods. Sometimes the one method is, is better than the other one. Right. Even for double integral, when you convert it to a 
um, a single integral, like you call it, it red image, you still have to decide which one first, right? That helps you sometimes when uh, 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 one, one order is simpler than other order, but integral in other order, yes. All right, so for the same uh, problem, this time uh, I'm going to fix the z first. So, so z is going to be between negative r and the positive r, okay? So this is my, uh, I begin with this interval, okay? And then for each z, I draw a disk, okay? So for each z, you have x squared plus y squared less than or equal to r squared minus z squared, okay? For each six z. So my dz is going to be x and y, Okay, so the triple integral becomes becomes d uh, 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 d z. Okay, but this double integral inside is just the area of this, this d z. But d z is already know that. Okay, this is just the area of dz, but we can use the area formula for the disk. Okay, we remember that formula in the lower dimension, which we can dimension when step by step again, right? So this is a, what is that? It's gonna be pi times the radius square, because the radius, as the square of the radius is gonna be r square minus z square, actually, and the dz, okay? Yeah, then, of course, we assume that we know the area of the disk with radius, certain radius. So it's pi r squared z minus one third z cubed. Okay, so let's plug it r for, for, uh, for z. So guess that's the first part. And the second part actually is the same, just a negative. Negative becomes negative, uh, you know, negative RQ plus one third RQ. Okay, so after simplifying, you get four pi over three RQ. Exactly the same because then this part will be two uh, RQ divided by three. The second part is also it's a plus actually. Yeah, so that's why I get four. So you get the same answer. <coughs> Right. So now let's take a look at other problems. Right, let's do problem number 12, I like it. Right, so this is a, a triple integral, sine y dv, so e, lines below z equals x, that's a point, and above the triangular region with vertexes zero, zero, uh, what, yeah, it's a three dimension, so I put a three co component. Pi zero zero and zero pi zero, okay? Uh, you have to draw the region first. That's the challenging part. You must know this. <laughs> because this is a part of the solution, the picture. Okay, right, so let's draw this. Okay, it, it's x, y, z. So zero, zero is this point, pi zero, zero is this point, zero pi is this is the point, okay? So this is a, this is a, a, a the, the, the domain, the x, y plane, 
So if you want to draw x, y plane, just only, and you look at this, is going to be something like that, okay? All right, that depends on how you view it. <clears throat> Another one is the plane. So it's like you're going to build a, a house with a loose, right? It's about this triangular uh, uh, rigid. So z equals x. So it means if x is zero, it is going to be zero. If x is increasing, uh, it is increasing. So x equals zero is on the y-axis, okay? So it goes like that. I don't know how to draw it. It's hard, a little bit hard, yeah. It's kind of like this, yeah, okay? It's over, but, uh, but you have to cut it through. This is a, you have to put a support here if you want to build. Then you only have half of that. You don't have uh, the rest of that. Yeah, that's my understanding, okay? Um, so when uh, z, x equals zero, the z is gonna be zero. When x increases, z increases. So it's a, uh, it actually, it's going to be like that, okay? Can you see that, okay? It's harder to visualize. It. Anyway, it's a, it's a, it's still, the loop is still triangle, triangular loop, okay? It's above this triangle uh, region in, in x one. So how do you describe this solid in a space? Easy. I think we should use which method? We should use the D already given the triangle. Otherwise, it's harder to find another. You can use any of this. Uh, yeah, I think in this particular case, let's go out, go back. Which formula we should use? I think. Uh, I think. Uh, we should use the first one on the picture here. So fix the D first, D should be outside, okay? Then you determine the Z value, okay? So look at this picture, yeah, so this is a... So you write down uh, the Chopin's group. So I'm going to denote uh, D, the triangle, uh, in R2, was vertex 0, 0, pi minus 0, and 0 in the pi, okay? And this is a D, okay? And, the, and in three dimensional case, that's a D here, yeah. okay? <coughs> <coughs> then, for each point, <coughs> In D, you draw a vertical line. You draw a vertical line, and you have to determine the uh, the z value, the, the 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 range for the z value. Okay, so z for the, this line in the in the solid, the lowest value for z zero, the largest value for the z is going to be x. Okay. Because the loop, uh, the, the graph is, is given by, because the graph above that region is given by z equals x, okay? Yeah, all right, so now it's clear. So this is triple integral, uh, which, is, which is going to be the sine uh, y. Yeah. This gives me the double integral, and this is from zero to x, sine y, and dz, dA, okay? Uh, clearly, it's independent of uh, z, so it's going to be x times sine y and dA. So you become a, this become a, a, a double integral of a triangle. Next step is to, Iterate, uh, integrate this double integral over this triangle. Okay. Okay, this line 
is going to be x plus y equals pi. Right? So the next step is to uh, apply the forbidden theorem to this double integral. Then, uh, then, uh, then you can choose, uh, doesn't matter which one you can choose. <clears throat> okay, if we put x outside, so x is going to be from, from zero to pi, right? And then the y variable, you have to, for each x, right, you have to determine the y value for the line segment inside uh, this triangular domain. So the y variable is between zero and pi of x. Uh, pi minus x, yes. Okay. Then this, then you have a problem here. Uh, why? Because if you do this way, the entire derivative of uh, uh, sine y will be negative cosine y, right? Then the y is making more complicated. See, you got negative x, and here cosine pi minus x minus cosine zero, okay, dx. So you have to evaluate the cosine pi minus x. Cosine pi minus x is going to be negative cosine x. I <laughs> still remember this, All right? So it's going to be, uh, yeah, negative cosine x. I hope you still remember that. Okay, minus one. So now everything becomes positive. So I get x cosine x plus x. <coughs> I have to I have to evaluate this x times cosine x. To do that, I have to get rid of yeah, let's go, let's look at this first. Okay. Integration by parts. Okay. This will be v psi x. Okay. D psi x. So it'll be x psi x minus psi x dx, which will be cosine x. Negative cosine, so it's positive cosine x here. Okay. So it's plus C. So now I find the entire derivative. I go back here. Uh, x sine x plus cosine x plus half of x squared and evaluate at the two end points. Sine pi is zero, don't worry about that. And the cosine pi is gonna be negative one minus when x equals zero, it's a one, right? So that is going to be pi square over two minus two. Uh, is this a positive number? Yes, because pi square minus four is positive. Pi square is uh, is more than nine, okay? So you can double check, sometimes get a negative number, it's something's wrong because Integral of sine y should be positive because the y is between, uh, uh, yeah, y is between zero and, the, and pi. So this is a positive function, so integral must be. But <coughs> now what happens if you choose a y variable instead of x variable first to evaluate the integral? I'm trying to compare that. Um, if you choose a y variable, maybe, a little bit easier. Okay. No, I don't think so. So let's give up. Okay. I don't see any, yeah. Simple. Sometimes it's a little bit easier. But, so triple integral is more complicated. And if uh, 
if you study, no, it's a web of imagination. Okay, we live in three dimensional space. Okay, so if you think about a, a solid in a 10 dimension space, how to find the volume, right? Now you have to integrate, not triple integral, it's 10 dimension integral, okay? So you have a 10 singles. And you have to step by step to, 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 to evaluate, yeah. And yeah, in geometry, maybe, you know, we live in three dimensional space, it doesn't matter. But while we have to study uh, integrals of a function is more than three dimensional, more than three variables, is because when you study some uh, data and then it involves more than uh, one million variables, that's possible, and we have to use a supercomputer to do it, analyze it. Okay, so then you have to you have to deal with a uh, 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 partial derivative of a function depends on one million variables. Okay, and uh, and uh, of course the computer takes too much time to do the computation. That's the reason we are waiting for faster compute. Okay, otherwise you cannot design uh, uh, almost a real human being because when you when you put eyes balls there and get camera and you get information to surround the area. And you have to let the computer do very fast compute, you know, compute and figure out what is the next step, right? So I don't know whether you can live long enough. Someday you can spend $10,000 just buy a person, it's not a real person, to come to your home, do all the work for you, okay? That's possible. It's maybe uh, when the time when you go get into the nursing home, Probably you don't need it to go to nursing home. You had just <laughs> buy some, order some, yeah, machine, very good machine to help you. That machine really good. It will watch you every activity and uh, find out that something's wrong. Will be in, informs a real doctor, <laughs> or even this fake doctor can help you get a prescription. Medicine will come in and something. Okay, so that's the technology. Yeah, let's dream for that. I cannot wait too long. So, uh, we still have a time. Now, next, uh, I probably trying to save time, so I'm, maybe I just set up the integral instead of uh, evaluate, okay? So this is, a, uh, this is a problem number 12. Okay, we are going to do the chip integral. Is increased by the surfaces z equals Z equals x squared minus one, z equals one minus x squared, z equals zero, and y equals two. Hi. So z, okay, now you have to draw the graph first. <laughs> That's the difficult part, right? Otherwise, how do you set up the, the iterative integrals and find the best weight, best order, right? So let's do our best to evaluate this integral. Assuming this is just only two dimension, let's draw this two dimensional picture first. Suppose you just have an x and the z, right? So z equals x squared minus one is going up like this. Z equals one minus x squared is going down like that. So this is a, yeah, this is a, Yeah, so only these two curves already bound the region in the x, z plane, okay? Yeah, that helps you to, to, to draw the 3D picture. Okay, so 3D picture, yeah, the 3D picture, okay? Uh, z equals x square minus one. Uh, so it's going to be a parabola opens upward, okay? And, uh, yeah, it's not like a real, you know, you have to imagine 
one side more curved than the other side, right? And the z equals uh, one minus x squared, it's going down like that. Because there's no restriction on y, that means it's going to be like cylinder, cylinder type. Okay, it's cube. Right? No restriction on the z. And the y equals zero is this is the xz plane. Okay, y equals one, it is here. And y equals two. So it's another one like that. Okay, so this is a, actually the cylinder, a piece of cylinder. The, the cross section will looks like that. Okay. All right. So this is a, yeah. If you want to draw it, it looks like that. You know, it's a cylinder. <laughs> so we're going to evaluate uh, uh, the triple integral, and the, clearly the best way to do is you project the cylinder to a two-dimensional domain. Yeah, so I immediately I will, uh, uh, there's a couple ways. <laughs> so the triple integral x minus y dv, right? Uh, you can have this type of integral and that is going to be dA and that integral will be dy, okay? x minus y. Or you have one uh, single integral, but then start from zero to two, then you have a double integral, and that's dy. Because so the cross sections are identical, right? So this will be in the xz plane, so x minus y. So there are two types of double integrals, okay? Right? Uh, two type of integrals, okay, it's wet integrals you can begin with. <clears throat> and I'm pretty sure, yeah, this is start from zero to two, okay. Uh, yeah, okay, so what is a D? D in two dimensional um, plane, X, Z plane, will be X and the Z. And the, and uh, and the z is going to be one minus x square. Okay, it's going to be greater than or you know, uh, it's less than that. Uh, and z is greater than or equal to x square minus one. Anyway, it's bounded by these two curves. Uh, maybe I should say just bounded by. Yeah, it's between. Between z equals x square and z equals x squared minus one, okay? <coughs> right. So using uh, ease of the integral, you can evaluate uh, this, this uh, double integral. I think I should begin with this one because otherwise you have to deal with the double integral immediately, okay? So if you begin, yeah, this e, it's going to be double integral d, and here this is going to be uh, right, and you find the entire derivative of that function. It's going to be x y minus half of y square. That is going to be two x minus half of x squared and dA. Okay, now we come to the double integral, right? So clearly to this problem, this is negative one here is positive one, right? And, uh, and the bottom part is z equals one, <coughs> Uh, x squared minus one. This top part will be z equals one minus x squared. So clearly I have to use this double integral, uh, this iterative integral, okay? As x to the x, 
x is between negative and positive one. Then for each x, you draw the vertical lines. Right? So for x, the lower z will be x squared minus one, the top z is one minus x squared. Right? <clears throat> oh no, this is a z. Okay, it's independent of z, so you will get independent of z, just take a constant out. Right? And then the difference of this is two. The difference is two, two minus two x squared and dx. And then you evaluate this, uh, evaluate this, uh, this integral, and everybody knows how to do that. Right? Yeah, let's go back to this problem. Yeah, I decided not to evaluate this double integral first, so I use the first one. The idea is that how do you get the first one? You, this is a domain D. You take an arbitrary point, X and Z, then you draw uh, the line segment in the solid. And then you look at the, look at the, the, the Look at the range for the z. So clearly z is between, I look at the range for the y variable for fixed x and z. For fixed x and z, you look at the range for the y variable, which is between zero and the two. So that's why you can have a zero. And sometimes it, it depends. Uh, depends on the choice location of, it, of the point in d, okay? Okay, let me quickly do the next problem, then we're done, we we'll finish this. Okay, this next problem uh, is gonna be number 18. Okay, this is a triple integral. I'm not gonna finish the computation, I just set up the integral, okay? E is bounded by the cylinder x uh, y squared plus z squared equals nine and the plane x equals zero, the planes, okay? x equals zero, y equals three x, and z equals zero. In the first octant, octant. So that means here's a picture and the cylinder is here's X, Y, Z. How does the cylinder look like? The cylinder, uh, the cross cylinder is a circle here in the Y, Z plane. And then go in this direction. Okay. But the plane is going to be X equals zero which is y z plane, and the uh, y equals, and z equals zero, which is, yeah, y, z equals, yeah, so it's hard to draw right now, okay? Anyway, it's in the first octant, okay? In the first octant. So the only problem is y z equals three x, z equals three x is a, is a line, is a, is a plane. It's harder to join now. It's really hard to join. Okay, so you imagine how does a cut, uh, yeah, z, y equals zx. Yeah, so you, you will get a picture. Z equals, uh, so z equals, zero is uh, is a is a part in the x y plane so i'm trying to draw the cross section it looks like that is a cross section okay so the picture what i'm going to get is the solid what i'm going to get is something like that
Do you agree? Yeah. <clears throat> and this is a determinant by. Oops. Okay. So you have to choose a D. Uh, I don't have a time now. <laughs> yeah. The color change. Let's connect. Okay. So you have to decide which D is going to begin with, right? You can choose a line or you can choose a. I think you have to choose this this side of D. Um, yeah, because this is a looks like a nice one. Then you 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 determine the for each Z you determine the line from here to here. Okay, so that's the idea. I stop here maybe. You think I'm about <coughs> how to set up as an integral. So this will be the double integral. And uh, this will be dx, and here's dx, okay? Something like that. <coughs> so it's a z, okay? Yeah. Yeah, for the y value, that's going to be z. So fix the one. All right, that's it. <laughs>